President Biden's fiscal year 2025 budget request for the Department of Energy, including the National uh, Nuclear Security Administration. DOE's work has a direct bearing on our national security, our international competitiveness, and our ability to tackle the climate crisis. The investments we make at DOE protect our energy grid, drive down our dependence on foreign energy, drive down energy prices, and drive forward innovation in clean energy, and so much more. At the Pacific Northwest Lab in Washington State, we are always seeing how these investments fuel cutting-edge research. But this is a constant race against the clock that is the climate crisis and against our competitors. We cannot cut investments without seeding ground. We have to make sure breakthroughs in AI, quantum computing, clean energy, and so much else are happening here in America. And while we're at it, we have to make sure the jobs that follow are staying in America too. But it's not just our economy that is at stake in the department's work, it is our national security as well. For one thing, the climate crisis is more than a rolling series of devastating weather disasters. It is also an economic threat and a national security threat, as our generals have warned us. Then, of course, DOE's management of our nuclear activities has enormous stakes for our national security. And for the sake of our families, we have to take a balanced approach where we are investing not just in weapons, but in non-proliferation work and environmental cleanup efforts. So while I appreciate the targeted increases in the President's budget for non-defense programs like improving our grid and existing energy infrastructure, developing and deploying new energy technologies, lowering emissions and tackling the climate crisis, and funding our scientific research enterprise, I have to say I want to see a better balance than increasing nuclear weapon activities by 4 percent to nearly $20 billion while decreasing nuclear nonproliferation and cleanup by 4.5 percent and over 2 percent, respectively. Now, we proved last year that when we set partisanship aside, we are capable of working through these issues in a productive way. We wrote solid bipartisan bills for fiscal year 24 under some really tough top lines. And I even made sure we included historic funding for the Hanford nuclear cleanup in Washington State. That was huge progress, and I'm pleased to see that this budget request includes funding to meet the obligations in the holistic agreement between the Department of Energy, EPA, and the Washington State Department of Ecology. Because we do have a moral and legal responsibility to do right by our Hanford workers and the Tri-Cities communities, and I will not rest until we have lived up to that. I hope we can once again make good bipartisan uh, progress on that issue and many others. And I will remind my colleagues the only way we are going to make that happen is by working together in good faith. And unfortunately, House Republicans are already once again planning to ignore the bipartisan deal they cut last year on top lines and now push through drastic spending cuts to non-events that are going nowhere. But just like last year, we can choose a different path here in the Senate, a bipartisan one. I know there are members on both sides who are concerned about how these tight caps will undermine our nation's strength. And as I've said from the start, I share those concerns and have made clear that any additional resources must be provided equally between the defense and non-defense sides of the ledger. Because as we will talk a lot about today, both play a vital role in securing our nation's future. Our measure of success should be what does it take to stay ahead of competitors like China and lead the industries of the future? What does it take to keep our economy strong, create jobs and lower prices? And what does it take to keep our nation safe? In other words, what do it, does it take to actually meet the challenges we have before us? And hearings like this are a crucial opportunity to help answer those questions. So I look forward to discussing these issues today with our witnesses and working with Ranking Member Kennedy and our colleagues to deliver the resources DOE needs to keep us on the forefront of innovation and progress and to keep America safe. With that, I will turn it over to my Ranking Member Kennedy. <laughs>